I'm getting a little cheesy. I was going to start with the uh, Mr. Rogers <laughs> song. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, so I realized, you know, I planted this tomato plant and I kind of just talked you through it. I didn't actually do it. And that's the point of a video. Uh, although it's starting to sprinkle, um, I think I'm going to do my next one. So, you know, you can't do everything at once. And I take things step by step. And, of course, you know, you want to break up your day a little. So, sitting at the computer all day is not healthy for any of us. And so, I don't know. I'm going to see if this angle works. I don't know. Okay. So, like I like to say, like taking all my mom's toys out of the uh, planters, but she likes um, getting these things at the dollar store. What can I say? So you can tell when it's windy out. It also should scare off some animals that you don't want eating your plants or your fruit or your veggies. Um, so I just put these in other plants until I'm ready to put them back in that pot. It's gonna ruin my hair. All right, that's okay. I, I expected it, and we're expecting thunderstorms tonight. Anyway, so I knew my hair was gonna stay straight. Um, so yeah. So these are we call these steaks, not like fork and knife meat steaks, but um, they stand up and help the plant stand up and the tomato cage. Um, I'm just gonna pick out some weeds. Ooh, so the roots are coming through. It's time to plant. Um, so we have a giant pine tree. And so um, some of the needles get in there. It's a little too much. I do garden with my bare hands. Um, we were taught by Carolyn Taylor of the New Jersey State Agriculture Department of uh, Education, I guess. Um, that if you garden with your hands, there's healthy bacteria that's in the soil and it raises your happy hormones. So it's actually an antidepressant to garden without gloves on. Um, so I try to do it as much as I can. Um, when I used to, that's a plant I want. So, so this is a plant I've had since I was in eighth grade. Um, and I tell this story all the time because we have pots of it at school. I have a pot of it right here. Um, it does spread, but it's very pretty. Um, I have a big pot back there. I don't know if you can see it, but um, it's called sedum. And sedum is actually a large group of plants, um, but they're like succulents, kind of like cacti, where they're good at holding on to water. So they're good in drought. Um, they have a beautiful, the ones I have, have a beautiful yellow flower. And I don't know what that sprout is, but... Maybe it will survive down below with my butterfly bush and my raspberries. Um, so yeah, and my grandparents were farmers and they had chickens in the next town over. They had chickens and they used to do, use the poop for um, fertilizing the yard, which I've never done. But the soil I get does have chicken poop in it and it comes from Home Depot. Um, but I chose it because I knew my grandparents did that. My dad taught me that. So, um, all right, so since the soil has been in here for a while, um, I take a lot of it out and I replace it with some new soil. I'll use this for flowers. I'll use this for other vegetables other than tomatoes because whatever tomato plants have been in here have taken out the nutrients that they need, that they use. So I want to replace some of that, right? So the soil is a little depleted, um, and so that's also why farmers rotate their crops. So let's see. I'm just taking a bunch until I feel that it's like hard underneath. Um, and then I'll mix that stuff up too. So I have a big bin that I put my waste soil in for when I'm doing flowers or if I, I'm building a new flower bed. So I need all the soil I can get. money-wise and environmentally-wise. Um, it takes a long time to make soil, and we're running out of it um, in nature. So we got to come up with some solutions. And some of my professors have come up with some great solutions. 
Um, so I had a professor who developed a way of cleaning contaminated soils. So soils that had uh, contamination from factories or because we had a lot of factories in New Jersey. So that was off the Patterson Point part of the, I don't think it's the Rawway River. Maybe this, not the Scataway. Um, not Pascac. Is it Patterson River? No. Anyhow, so he cleaned up soils. And then we had another professor. So that was Mr. Stern. He was pretty awesome. And, um, and you notice that. <laughs> he actually is the one that convinced me to go back into teaching. Because um, I wasn't planning on it. But that was many years ago. That was like 15 years ago. So, um, more than that. That makes me sound old. Anyhow. <laughs> um, yeah. So, my other professor made compost using food waste from the cafeteria. And actually, my dad's business helped him. Um, so he also needed um, wood shavings or sawdust. And so my dad had a custom woodworking shop. And whenever he was sanding down or cutting um, woods that were natural, so woods that were not treated, he would save the sawdust and I would deliver it to this professor's composter. Um, which was really cool because I'm interested in composting. So that's pretty good. And so now I'm just gonna break this bottom soil up so that there's air pockets in there for the roots. Um, they'll get something called root rot if they're just sitting under like soggy, watery, logged soil. And I try to get to the bottom so that way I know I did a good job mixing. So, as we know, plants need CO2 and water, and that needs to be in balance. And some plants are very happy underwater, but these are not that type of plant, right? The plants in the fish tank don't need soil. So. Alright, I think that's pretty good. So, I'm going to show you and then I'm gonna go get some potting soil and I don't think you really need to see that it's raised bed soil um, so because anything in a pot or above ground so see I took out some um, and I'm going to replace it with that soil down there so shout out to Home Depot and Nature's Care if you feel like donating me some of my favorite soil, please do so. <laughs> um, I have a new garden to start at a new school. We're getting a new building. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Okay, my dream. Living the dream. Okay, be back in a minute. Okay, I don't know how exciting this is, but I filled an old pot that's kind of light. I guess it's my replacement of having a bucket. I'm just going to dump soil into the pot. Um... So, you know, I didn't want to be a hypocrite yesterday. All I did was talk about it. Today, I'm going to show you. I don't know how exciting this is, but I'll try to do it one-handed. So, there we go. I need another bucket full to get to the level that I want. Right, I'm breaking up the clumps. So that the plant is happy. I did notice a lot of my soils this year are very woodsy. There's lots of wood chips. I don't know if that's on purpose or to be cheap. I'm not really sure. Um, I mean, they do bring break down and provide, you know, stability as far as fiber goes and probably some nutrients. Not that many, but uh, I don't know what that's all about. Anyhow, I'm gonna get another bucket full. Okay. All right. So I got the soil up to the level that I want, um, and it's kind of funny. I was worried about this one being having too much soil, but I think it's perfect now. Um, I was worried that it was, like, overflowing. Oh, my God. I am so... Ugh. I feel like I need to take another shower. Ugh. All right. Anyhow. So, I'm going to dig a deep hole. Sorry for my shakiness. But 
I do not have like a camera stand. This is not <laughs> professional, I guess. Try to get kind of centered. All right, all right, so I don't know if you can even see. Okay, so that's how deep. So the way to test this, and I see people doing this all the time, put the pot in and you want the soil to be level or a little above where the soil line is in that pot and I think I reached that so now uh yeah this is hard one-handed so I'm gonna squeeze and videotaping at the same time so you squeeze all around and then you try to grab close to the base of the plant and you shake 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 lift 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 and it comes out all right and I am using these this year. Um, well, I mark certain plants, but the ones that I don't need, like a lot of my flowers I don't really need. Um, I've been spray painting them white and using them as my plant markers throughout my garden. Um, I need to get a paint marker to be able to finish that idea. Um, so I stood it up straight, right? Some people break up the roots. Um, I feel like they're going to do that on their own. They're going to seek out um, where there's water. So I start at the bottom, put a bunch near the bottom, S sorry, soil. Um, I just noticed there was a dead leaf, so I'm just going to throw that out into the yard for compost naturally. And I'm going to cover it up with the soil. And my other one, I made a mound this year. I don't know if I've ever done that, but Maybe this will do better. So, I think that looks pretty good. Pretty straight, pretty centered. All right, and so that's it. I'm gonna start putting in the tomato cage. Which, by the way, you can use for other plants. I've used it for our raspberries. I've used it for peonies, which are um, a heavier flower. I can show you a couple we have. Um, and we got some new ones this year. And so as the plant grows, the branches will come out of these different sections. The wire will help stand it up and hold any really heavy fruit. Um, I do have mine raised up on a table. Um, that's, and this one on a milk crate, even though I don't think the milk crate will really work. But um, we've had groundhogs that like to eat my tomatoes. So they will come up on the deck and they will climb in and just eat tomatoes. So if I have it raised up, Generally, this table, definitely, it can't climb up. It's not a climbing type animal, I don't think. I think they're more diggers. But this one, I feel like there's enough things that it could, like those, um, the bars on the milk crate, that I think it could actually climb up there. So I might be helping him <laughs> eat those tomatoes, not these. Um, the ones I planted yesterday were called 100 Sweet. I've been buying those for years. Um, they're little cherry tomatoes. That's my mom's preference. Um, cause big tomatoes, like I said, the groundhog will eat or will lose them in some way. So we rather have lots of little ones than just a couple of large tomatoes. So this one is called patio and I've grown this before. So it's like a medium to smaller tomato and they do really well in pots. So that's why I pick it. Um, and again, I've had good success with these types. So I buy them again. Um, and I don't eat tomatoes, but I will plant them and grow them for my family. Um, and so, and at school too, they do really well at school. Um, one year at the middle school, I planted four Rutgers plants, like the last week of school. And I came in late July and the thing was just overflowing with tomatoes. I actually took them across to Gabby's bakery. So shout out to Gabby's bakery to Ruben. Ruben's the bomb. Um, he wasn't there that day. I don't think, but, um, it was fun. I like him. He was always nice to me and made me good quesadillas with extra cilantro like I like it so again the steaks help with stability I mean it's not the best right now but it will be it'll be enough um, so I'm just pulling off the leaves I see some dried spots we don't need a fungus or any kind of disease getting in there into the plant I try to remove the pine needles they're very acidic and they'll actually like burn it's like a chemical burn so I try to remove those, but they are good for the soil too, but just not too many, not too much. Um, so this is one of my other plants, that, some of the other plants I like. So the, this is called coleus. This is a watermelon pattern. 
Um, this is begonia. This is one of my friend's favorites, so I decided to plant them because she also likes coleus. Shout out to Nancy and the cones. Um, they're like family to me. And, um, this is, oh my god, snapdragon, which I know is very popular. It's common. It's been around forever. I just never bought it and planted it. And this is marigold, which will keep off some pests, hopefully. Um, my squirrels like to dig and hide things. Ooh, I have a sprout coming up. So I also sprinkled some uh, zinnia, which are good for butterflies. I know that Rutgers Gardens plants tons of them, and they have tons of butterflies uh, getting the nectar from those. I've watched it at the farmer's market. And I've also planted, in some of my bigger pots, I've planted some sunflower seeds. Um, so I get, hopefully, some sunflowers. Um, yeah, I planted some in there. Don't tell my mom. But that's kind of something I've been doing over the years since I was born, practically. We used to have a veggie uh, garden in my backyard. And I was always known for planting things where they didn't belong. So you'd find some carrots in with the spinach or some corn in with the carrots. Um, I didn't believe in rows. I still don't believe in rows, I guess. Um, I like, I don't like rows. I like it looking a little natural, a little... I don't want to say messy, but I don't like seeing the soil, right? So I want the plants to soak up the sunlight, not the soil. So anyhow, I think I've talked enough. I think I've said some important and good things, and hopefully you got something out of it. Um, and yeah, so like, subscribe, comment, share. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.